Hello and welcome to the Believe You Can Paint channel, where we believe anybody can paint if they only believe it enough to try. Today we're going to be painting Yogg Sothoth from the Cthulhu Wars game, and that's made by Peterson Games. Look at that face. Now that's actually not a face, it's a, a few components that together, to me, looks like a face. I've seen this figure painted a bunch of times. The intestinal spinal tube in the middle usually looks like a nose. The horizontal line usually winds up getting painted like teeth. The skull looking parts usually get painted looking like skulls. And the end result is a face, whether they want it to be or not. No offense if you've painted yours like that. Awesome. I saw a lot of really good models. None of them work for me. And so I started looking for ways to deal with this problem and I realized that painting the way that these parts are, there wasn't really a way to hide this with paint. And so I started thinking about other solutions and I remembered back, I did a model, maybe some viewers will remember him, it was Galaki from the Cthulhu Wars uh, set and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, here's a picture of him and uh, I put that custom tongue on him. I, I saw a version before where he had like a long snout and so I decided to get some green stuff and try to do a tongue. Now this is only my third go with green stuff so I'm not a pro by no means. So what I did first uh, is I broke out the uh, sticky tack and just started working on it a little bit. You can see we've already got the model primed with a Citadel Wraithbone undercoat and so I just pulled out the tools that's a cheap set of tools from Amazon and uh, started working on it just to see if putting some tentacles in that space would work for me. Um, and so you can see here I'm just kind of fitting that tack on to see. We'll bring him up close. And I think I'm able to get those tentacles to look pretty close to what the tentacles on the lower part of the model look like. And so I break out the green stuff here and just start rolling it up. This stuff is, for me, kind of hard to work with. I haven't uh, really figured it out yet, but I do know you want to keep kneading it until it turns green. And so you'll see me do that here. I do go for the water a couple times. I found that just a dab of water on your fingers really makes it a lot easier to work with. And one of the big things with this stuff is you don't want to leave your fingerprints in it. So you can knead it up with your fingers, but then you really need to do something to get your fingerprints out of it. So you can see I have this piece of PVC here that I use to roll it out. And there you can kind of see one of the reasons this stuff's hard to work with. It just gets awfully tacky at a one when you mix it one-to-one -one like Citadel suggests. I have seen some guys say there's easier ways to mix it to make it a little more pliable. Uh, but... For me, I haven't found my groove on that yet. So when I did the tongue for Galaki, I made the tongue separately and then fitted it to his lower jaw. And then I actually attached it with glue and then primed the whole thing. In this instance, I used the green stuff and I've seen where guys have adhered it right to the model. And this had a lot of texture underneath it. and so. I went ahead and tried that and just really pressed the uh, green stuff in and around what was already there on the model and it seemed to work pretty good. It actually dried and held. Uh, so you can see here I'm just kind of working with those tools that I have and trying to get the tentacles in there. You know, I'm just kind of free forming it here. I pushed some fat rolls in, uh, kind of like what the model had and some cuts and grooves you know they're not nice and smooth and so I was kind of thinking about how my paint was going to lie into those grooves as I was putting it on. Now if there's one critique my area that I put these cynicals on probably has a little more texture than the lower part uh, but I felt like eh, it, it it would look good and it, since it was separate from the other tentacles I thought that would be okay and there are a few spots on him where he does have some more extreme detail so I just went with it here. And this is kind of just all experimentation. I knew that I didn't like the model or that part of the model enough that I had to fix it and so to me it was worth it to risk having to strip him down or 
having to pick all this stuff out of him once it got on there if I didn't like it because I really just did not like this portion of the model. And I think you might see the theme throughout. I really never came up with a way that this model really spoke to me. So the colors are kind of extreme. Uh, and there's times where I go to default mode where, you know, bone is bone. So I paint it like bone and skin is skin. So I paint it like skin. And that's just kind of a, that's kind of me struggling with not having inspiration for the model, but still wanting to paint it. Now, the reason I'm painting this particular model, because I have a plethora that need to be painted, uh, is actually for a friend. He's wanting to play this faction, and he asked me to go ahead and paint the model. So, uh, whether he likes it or not, I guess he'll get over that. <laughs> so, I'm going to kick on some music, and we'll uh, you know watch, watch it take off here. We'll jump right through the priming process, and you'll see, uh, you'll see that he's primed, and we can jump in with the painting.
right, that was a pretty good music block, <laughs> uh, mainly because I didn't have much to say. Uh, if you didn't notice, I started off uh, a, with a big jump uh, where after we did the red, I just didn't know what to do, so I painted one half of the model experimenting to see if I could find something I liked, and I found something I didn't dislike, so that was a start. Um, so. You can see also I've struggled with these uh, uh, horn-like tentacles. I didn't want them to be bone. I wanted them to be different, but I didn't know what I wanted them to be other than black. Uh, I really thought the black looked good and stood out, but I couldn't find a level of black that I wanted. So I wound up here. We've got our second version of the black on them, and I actually wind up dry brushing them with some red and then coating them with a dark purple. Uh, at one point also so um, a lot of this is done with contrast paint uh, you might have seen a couple spots already uh, where I strayed from the contrast paint and then later on in the video uh, we'll get into some glazes and shades but those are really just to tidy up for the most part and do a couple effects I was looking for but the majority of it is is with contrast paints and the big thing about this model, again, the only part that I'm really happy with myself is the tentacles up top, and I think those did come out good. You can already see they really transformed the model. Uh, if we look here, so now I'm going in, uh, I was just going in with some of that flesh, and that was just to go over the top of the contrast. It was a little too blotchy. And so I wanted to clean that up to where it looked a little smoother. And so I dry brushed just a base paint on. And now I'm going in with my P3 Crix Bane. Uh, this is, again, my favorite base color that I use. So I always use this on all my bases. It's a good coverage, cheap. Uh, and, you know, with some shade and dry brushing over it, it looks really good. So just going through there. Uh, you've probably seen throughout the video, and I think it comes back here in a little bit, I did pick up the Citadel paint pot, uh, or water pot. I, I really like that thing. It's got some grooves down at the bottom to flick your brush across to knock the paint out of it. It's got some waves on the sides to help push the paint out of the brush, and then it's got these uh, grooves where you can bring your brush to a tip. Now, it's not great for the size brushes I use with contrast, the tip can't get down in there very well, but uh, you'll see me here in a second. I'm going to go through and start doing some of this vein detail work. And uh, with the uh, the brush I'm using, that's an Army Painter Psycho that I'll switch to. And that brush, you can get it nice to a nice tip on there, and I really like that. Uh, same thing with the Army Painter Regiment. It, pretty much anything that's a pointed brush. These that I'm using here are cheap Hobby Lobby snub nose brushes. Um, which are perfectly fine for everything that I'm doing except detail work. I, you know, I'm not a big brush snob. You, you might even see my uh, brush stand come up. It's got like a hundred brushes that probably total about five bucks. So <laughs> I do suggest buying yourself a good brush that fits your needs for contrast. Um, I've got a filbert that I really like for that. I uh, also suggest getting a dry brush that you like. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just get the kind that you like. Those cat's tongue brushes, the makeup brushes, they work really good. Uh, I had a good cat's tongue that I bought. Uh, it was a Da Vinci or Master Series, something like that from Hobby Lobby. You know, five, six dollar brush. I really, really liked it, but it's since worn out, so I've switched to those, uh, those makeup brushes because they tend to hold up a little better on the dry brushing but for detail work I that's where I would spend my money I would get a good brush whatever one fits you uh, it doesn't have to be name brand to be a good brush uh, for me army painter has fit the bill uh, I've also got some p3 brushes and I've got some citadel brushes I like those too but the army painter is really where it's at because of the triangle handle for me that is a little bit easier to grip so Still just going through and wrapping up the base here, um, and it 
pretty lengthy process just because he's got the good base um the the bigger base with all the details on it so i want to make sure i get in there good and you'll see on these models a lot of times the base is what brings them to life and it's not because the base is particularly special it just really makes it pop whenever you put it in uh, uh get it painted and looks really good so um when i go in and start doing this detail work here in a moment uh it looks like i'm just going really fast imagine this is 400 times speed here so um take your time do it right uh i uh for the for the thin detail lines like that i get out my smallest brush and uh i get just a ball of paint on the end smack it in the water real quick and that way it thins it out and then the the trick is i don't put the paint on the model i put the brush I don't put the brush on the model. Uh, the, I let the paint transfer from the brush to the model. Uh, and that's something that I picked up uh, on Painter's Guild, which I highly suggest watching if you're a new painter. It's fun. It's got uh, the guy that played Eric Matthews on Boy Meets World. It's a great show. Uh, they've got it uh, on VRV, I believe. Um, but it's a it's a Geek and Sundry. So uh, wherever you can watch Geek and Sundry, that's it's going to be on there. Uh, they have their own channel also project alpha i think you can pay for but uh yeah it's it's really uh it's it's really cool show and and that's where i learned that you know let the paint pass to the model same thing with paint and eyes which i'm not great at if we ever get there you'll see i'm not great at it but letting the paint pass to the model so we finally made it to that spot i filled in enough space and you can see here i've got that little bitty brush and uh, I am not going very fast at all. Again, this is 400 times speed to paint a quarter inch. You know, it's taking me a few seconds. So it's actually, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds to paint these little lines. And uh, also you'll see I'm kind of going at maybe like a 30 degree angle. Um, and, and that's because you can use like the edge of the brush against the spot and that'll keep you from poking the paint onto the model it'll help you do that pass a little easier so uh, it's hard to tell in the video this is, looks really white and that's because I got a new light um, I do suggest getting a good light and this thing's uh, Tautronics is what this is it's got an adjustable light level you can do an adjustable brightness and it has an adjustable uh, shade so you can do a cool to warm and there's like six different settings it was on Amazon for like $19.99. I would really suggest getting that uh, if you don't have a good lamp or, or that that's a really good starter lamp. I think I've actually I'm running two here, which you might have noticed in the video. There's a little wave every once in a while, and that's the two lights shining into the camera. But uh, the color I'm actually using here, this is the uh, Fulgrim Pink. It's a edge paint. Uh, that I picked up and it's about at the end of its life but it's it's got some chunks in it but it does good for this uh, it, it still goes on pretty well here so uh, it's actually like a really cotton candy pink color and it makes no sense veins being that color but I really wanted something somewhere to be light on the side with all those dark pinks and reds so alright we'll go to a little more music and uh and I'll come back here at the end.
All right, we've made it back to the base, and we're putting on a, a ink or a shade. We've talked about those before. Citadel calls them shades. Uh, some brands call them washes. Some brands call them inks. Inks are technically a different thing. In some cases, uh, we're going to call it a wash in this case. So I'm applying the new one, oil wash. It's one of the key washes that you'll you'll use and uh, I, I, I highly suggest getting new one oil, Agrax, Earth Shade, and then uh, Reichlin Flesh Shade. Those three, you can't hardly go wrong with them. And even if you're one of the guys that's going to go full contrast, those shades will still come in handy. There's going to be spots where you just really need the wash effect. So now I'm coming in with the Moro White and we're dry brushing. I did let that dry. I didn't show it, but the wash has to be totally dry before you can dry brush. So uh, this is just giving kind of a weathered, salty, washed out look to the base. Uh, I do this on all of them for Cthulhu Wars. Uh, there's one of those army painter brushes. Uh, this one is the regiment. And I'm just going in and painting the skulls white. And this is a little tedious because a lot of them are like half skulls, so it's hard to tell. Is that a round rock? Is that a weird jagged thing? Or is it a skull? So I'm get in here and, and do all those. And uh, just getting that wraith bone white base on there and uh, that's to because i'm going to come in with a contrast paint i'm going to come in with a you know my favorite skeleton horde so once i get those all white and dried up it, it let them set and uh, we'll get them painted now there's that citadel water cup i was talking about you can see the waves on the side and the grooves and i didn't mention earlier but there are brush holder lips that's what those are for is to set your brush handles into so that they're right where you want them to be um so i'm also it's off screen here to the right but i have some clean water that i'm using periodically so i'm using the wraith bone with just a little bit of water and where you saw me cleaning up there i actually got a little too much water and it ran on me so i should have that other brush i I've done that before, you know, and I do it regularly. I grab another brush that's clean and I'll stick it in there to soak up any excess. Contrast paint is really handy. You got to be fast so it doesn't stick, but that'll save you some repainting and recontrasting. I, mean, I have found so far that if you do have to go touch up with the wraith bone and then recontrast it, that's pretty easy to do. Uh, usually it looks pretty, pretty smooth and consistent as long as you keep your paint thin. Uh, but if you can keep from doing it, that's better. Here you can see me getting in there just more of that fine detail and getting it exactly how I like it. Um, there's, again, a lot of those skulls and it's just very, very difficult because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to leave any spots where the Nolan oil has set because that's going to give it a a black look instead of a brown look which is what the skeleton horde will do I did hit that little face type thing with the glaze there and that's uh, something I don't think I've used a glaze on the channel before but that's just a really thin paint that is uh, it, it's mixed with a viscosity to make it where it'll stick and dye other paints so it kind of dyes it yellow not unlike the contrast paints. I think the contrast paints have actually replaced glazes at this point. Um, but that that's what that was. Now right back in with that uh, Psycho detail brush. And I'm actually painting some glyphs on the side of those pedestals. You can't see them very well, but uh, there's some glyphs there. So I'm, I'm painting those white here, and I'm going to use a glaze on those as well. And this is where glazes get really nifty. If you do it on a white, it gives it almost like a glow, um, even more so than contrast paint. And it, Like Warp Lightning does it from contrast, but there's a lot of them that don't have that really fluorescent quality like the glazes do. And you'll see that here. I'm going to do two coats of the blue glaze. Uh, that's a glum and blue when we get to it. And it'll just really make those... Uh, glyphs pop like they're glowing blue 
Why did I pick blue? No clue. That's what I had laying around. <laughs> uh, I've done some blue glyphs before on um, uh, Shognar Flogin, or however you pronounce his name, the elephant dude from Cthulhu Wars. And uh, they came out really good, so I thought, eh, I'll go with what I know. Um, maybe that goes back to, again, my heart not being in it. Um, now this one here, I'm, I'm coming in with some uh, Flesh Terrors Red. And that was just to give it a little bit brighter red look in some spots. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit of transition on those big red balls because I, I kind of pictured them uh, with a... When I originally pictured them, I pictured them black with a little bit of red showing through. And then as I got to going, to them, going on them, I thought this red looked really neat, but it didn't have much uh, color shift. And so I went with that darker red. So it goes from a dark red to a little bit lighter red. And here we are with the Gloom and Blue. And you can see there's another Hobby Lobby special brush. And I'm just using it to dump that into those grooves. It's really wet, so it lays into the glyphs. And then it sticks just a little bit on the edges. And so you get a deep blue in the middle fading out to the gray. So it kind of gives it that glowy effect. And that's our episode for this week. Thank you for watching, and remember, believe you can paint.